guys, it's time for a long, long overdue video update on the stabilization system. Well, as you can see, it's had a very, very large redesign. This time, we actually have a full stack. Fins, nose cone, and actuator section all fully assembled. So let's start going into the breakdown. This is a design as a bolt together. I have the bolts up here, which are these, 1032, already undone, so I can show you what's inside. Also of note is the entirely redesigned electronics pack. If you'd focus, there it goes. Yes, we're still using an Arduino uh, Nano because it's much, much lighter and compact than the other options. Now, I've included telemetry as provided by an APC220 433 megahertz UART connect uh, and we're still using these for old servos. However, one of them or is it is completely broken and it needs new servos. But that may not be for long. So this is completed uh, based upon old cardboard prototypes, which I have since thrown out. But prototyping cardboard then turned into CAD and printed. So one thing I did note as a problem in this was that... Let's get this back in there. Knock it into there. And the other one. The MPU 6050 IMU is not aligned with the center. I'm going to have to flip it 180 degrees so that it is aligned with the center. Or I could just do that in software, but I don't feel like doing that because I'm going to redesign this anyway. Alright, with that sorted out, let's get on into the details of the fin mounting. As a lot of you remember, I had been fighting with the fin mounting solutions for quite a while. I started out with this. Hey, let's print one that'll go right on the service spline. It'll be 3D printing's great and all. Uh, representative servo, not the exact same as the HS82s in there. This one is uh, HS65s. It's slightly smaller and not as quick. But the issue with this was I could not, for the life of me, get the splines to print correctly. And also, this was kind of bulky and not that great of a fin design. So with that one out of the way, I went on to the next version. This one, uh, yeah, same problem. In that printing it without supports, impossible, and supports in there are impossible to get out too. That one was no good as well. Then I decided, all right, let's try designing a different kind of fin, a hypersonic fin. Still stuck on getting that spline printed. Nope, still not working. So hypersonic diamond style fin, important for later on. So thinking about other Matic solutions, I came up with this one. This one is designed to work with uh, circular servo horns. However, as you can see, it did not work out that well because not only are servo, circular servo horns expensive, but they also are a pain to get right because nobody really has dimensions for them easily available. And again, the support material, not great. So after all that brainstorming, I thought, wait a second. Servo horns, such as this one, already have the splines in them. Why not just bolt the servo horn directly to the fin? And so this design was born. Very, very simple. Now the downside to it is that the mounting here is not exactly the strongest and it's going to have a lot of force put on it when it's actually under test, especially when it's actuated sideways. This is a problem that's going to be solved in the next version. However, on the plus side, it is very simple, durable, and easy to print. You also get much, much nicer prints out of it because there's no support material required. So redesign wise, I'm going to have to go with gear motors. This is a one-to-one -one printed representative scale. Uh, these are ah, crap, available on Polo, or however the heck you say that, and run about $16 a piece. However, they are available for cheaper 
off of the usual suspect Chinese sites. Hello, Felipe. And, but these ones come with a built-in encoder and a header, which is great. Since encoders are a bit more complicated and much more precise than potentiometers. However, they come with the caveat of having relative positional control, not absolute like uh, potentiometers. So you're thinking, oh, he's going to mount it sideways, so direct drives out on the fins like this. Yeah, no. Because one, that is a very inefficient use of space and requires me to stay in a larger airframe. I'm trying to shrink the airframe down so that way I can not only save money, but also to uh, not require higher level, high power rocket certifications. My solution to that was bevel gears. I was like, oh, just buy some bevel gears that are the correct uh, bore size and easily fit on these. Easier said than done, since printed bevel gears of this size do not work at all. And getting M3 bore uh, bevel gears in metal is so, so hard on the typical suppliers. I tried pretty much everybody, and some of them quoted me hundreds of dollars for custom uh, components, which is way out of my price range, but I did eventually find some available for sale on AliExpress for cheap, relatively. 10 bucks a pair plus $4 in shipping, and they don't combine shipping, even though it's e-packet, and these things are really tiny. Chinese sellers, I don't get it either. So that's the current design, and I'm also gonna be adding an additional gear up top that will be driving a potentiometer so I can get absol uh, absolute positional feedback for startup and then relative positional feedback for running off of the encoders. I'm current. My current uh, CAD has shrunk it down to about 1.87 inches in diameter externally, which means I can use a two inch body tube, which is a full inch smaller than this and of uh, approximately uh, $15 cheaper. Now, the downsides are it's a little bit more expensive, uh, all in all, but I get much, much smaller airframes, lighter airframes, and also cheaper motors required. So, that's pretty much been this update. It's kind of crappy because I'm still working on redesigning and budgeting out everything. I'm debating whether I should start a Patreon or not. It's down to either a Patreon or GoFundMe because an entire testing system stack for this version is going to be around $600-ish. And even though I have a job, that's a lot of money to invest in this. And it's more than I'm willing to spend on this straight off the bat. And as my YouTube channel and my blog are disabled with AdSense as some jackass way back when decided hey i'm going to disable this guy's adsense so we can't make money off the stuff he creates and not make any money at all off of my content i'm producing so comment below what you think i should do whether i should go with a patreon or not and we'll see what happens all right thanks for watching that's been this update and see you guys later